Hello YouTube, this is Asatsu5, and today I'm doing a book review, and if you read the title correctly, it is Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. Um, some people uh, might not be interested in this book, but I think they should be interested in this book. Uh, I'm not saying this about my review, I'm saying this about this book. This is a very um, uh, uh, important book as uh, far as um, understanding uh, ministry and how to um, love on people and uh, be a good friend. It's a very s s significant book. It's a relevant book and it's a powerful book. At least it was very powerful to me. But again, that's Seeking Olive, Finding Jesus, A Devout Muslim Encounters Christianity by Nabil Qureshi. And um, I want to read to you the first text message I sent after reading this book. Uh, I sent this message more or less the same way. I added a couple of words when I posted it on a YouTube video. Um, the Bill's Best Friend. I posted it on one of his videos on his channel. And I posted, I sent this video, I sent this message to my brother's fiance first because she said I'd really like the book. Uh, it, but she didn't recommend the book to me. I just posted a picture on Instagram saying, the book I'm starting. She's like, oh, you'll love the book and stuff. So, um, and I'm still a little bit sick, so I might start coughing here in a little bit. But she was like, oh, you'll love the book, you know, all that stuff. And um, um, so my first text message I sent uh, after reading this book was to her. And I'll give you some background on Nabil and David Wood. And uh, I'm not going to like read you the story or anything. But I'm going to talk about why this book is important and my direct reaction to this book. Um, without getting too uh, deep into detail. Because <coughs> I don't want this uh, review to be a whole production. I don't want it to be too long. But this is the text message I sent. Wow, I just finished... Seeking Olive, Finding Jesus. I literally laughed in parts of this book, and I cried. I had to wash my face before anyone saw me at work. This message is powerful. This book, I hate to admit it, humanized Muslims to me. I knew they needed, I knew they were uh, humans and they needed Christ, but they were no longer a guy in a robe with, and a beard with a bomb to me. I have new appreciation for community, truth, and truth. Uh, and what I mean by that humanized Muslims to me, uh, in the media, there's a very st st stereotypical Muslim. You know, 9-11, uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, these are the, this is the side of Islam that we see most often in uh, the media, in the news. And if you're in the uh, apologetics theological circles, you know, you watch debates and stuff like that on the internet, you, um, you get a more milder view of Islam, but uh, not necessarily uh, a pleasant view of Islam. Um, and in no way am I saying there is a pleasant view of Islam as far as uh, the religion itself. But... Um, just like how in Christianity we have many denominations of Christianity, there's many sects and denominations of Islam. And um, a lot of them don't like each other. Um, but this, this particular sect that Nabil belonged to genuinely believed that Muhammad was merciful and that uh, Muslims only fought in defense. He later learned that this wasn't the case. But um, to... <coughs> Excuse me. To sum up this book, this book is a story about his life, his testimony, and how he can, and um, the culture, the Islamic culture that he grew up in. And first off, uh, you get his his dad was a U.S. Uh, a Navy veteran. His dad loved America, and uh, he talked about uh, their life after 9/11. They said they went to the nearest, uh, conven not convenience store, they went to the nearest store and bought every American flag they had, and they put them on all the vehicles, front porch, in the garage, everywhere, and, you know, they were genuinely scared. 
And the bill said uh, not only who hijacked these planes, but who hijacked my religion. Because he was taught his whole life that Islam is a religion of peace. And he genuinely believed it. Uh, and there's other Muslims who genuinely believe it. And, uh, uh, and like there's extremes on both sides, the peaceful ones and the not so peaceful ones. But he talked about um, how it took a mosque to raise a child and some very funny stories about his upbringing. And, uh, you know, he talked about um, how family oriented they were and how his mother, you know, um, basically babied him, you know. When he, he was a full he was a fully grown adult in college, still asking permission from his parents to do things, because that's how much he respected his parents. His parents loved him; and they genuinely loved him. When he went on his first overnight, and it wasn't overnight; it was three days, a three day forensic competition in school. Um, you know, she's kissing him and all that stuff, and uh, telling him how much she loves him, and to call as soon as uh, you get to your location, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, there was a lot of love there. And, uh, you know, for the longest time, uh, you know, I didn't see that side of the Arab culture. Um, so you, you learn a lot about Arab culture, if, especially with, within this sect of Islam. But, um, in general, how uh, it takes a mosque to raise a child. And um, you... You hear about his first interactions with Christians, which, as a kid, uh, he was trained to counteract certain arguments, and a lot of Christians at the same age group, and to be uh, blunt, in, in adulthood, people who claim to be Christians are not prepared to answer these questions uh, and, or arguments. He befriended a guy named David Wood, and he has a YouTube channel called Acts 17 Apologetics, and I'd encourage you to uh, subscribe to his channel if you want to learn about Islam and um, stuff in a very humorous, sarcastic, <coughs> sarcastic and entertaining way. Because uh, that's just his personality. And I'm not going to give you the uh, his testimony or a synopsis of his testimony, but he was not, he didn't grow up in the church, and he had some real issues and he was very militaristic uh, against um, um, Christians, you know. He thought he was better than them. But um, he found Christ, went to college, and then uh, Nabil went to the same college. They became friends, and they basically sparred against each other, you know. They were fighting each other, um, not in a mean way, but as friends fight, you know. Um, you know. And they did argue, they did get angry, they did, you know... Um, you know, have to like take breaks from each other for X amount of time, but they generally cared about each other because they had a relationship. This wasn't a random guy going to another random guy trying to sell religion. They had a relationship, and uh, they knew that the other one cared deeply about the other. Now, uh, doesn't mean that they didn't, you know, uh, argue, but they generally cared about each other, and. Uh, even though they um, did not believe in the same religion um, and the same same theology, they general, genuinely enjoyed each other's company. So, uh, anyways, uh, you know, the more he hung out with David Wood, the more he started questioning his faith. The more he started questioning his faith, the more devout Muslim he became. Uh, which is kind of weird because in Islam you're not allowed to question your faith. But when he started questioning his faith, you know, he's like, I got to make up for this sin of questioning my faith. So I need to pray more and do all this stuff. And, um, you know, they became good. Uh, they, they were good friends. And, um, and some kind of supernatural things happened that, uh, to Nabil uh, that uh, led him to believe that Christ is God and that the Bible can be trusted, along with the um, experience with David Wood and him studying his religion uh, a little bit more in depth. Uh, a lot of times uh, in the Islamic teachings uh, at their mosque, you know, they'll talk about these positive things. But the um, imam, I think is what it's called, the teacher, wouldn't spend too much time on the negative things. 
like, um, you know, he, Nabil believed there was no compulsion in um, Islam. But then you read a little bit farther into the Quran, and it says, you know, fight those who disbelieve until uh, they either believe or they pay the tax and they feel subdued. Um, you know, he, so um, anyways, there's a part to this book where he admits to his family that he has decided to become a Christian. And this part didn't make me cry. It made me feel very emotional because, um, you know, in the Arab culture, honor is very important. And if your kids are unruly, you know, it looks bad on the parents. And not only that, the parents believe that Nabil is going to go to hell because he uh, gave up on Muhammad and Allah. Um, and um, so they are very sad for their son as well. Uh, but it was very emotional in that part. It was a very painful part of his life. Um, and in fact, uh, a conversation he had with David Wood, David Wood said, um, if, uh, if Jesus is Lord, would you want to know? Uh, or basically, if you're wrong about Jesus, would you want to know? And he says, yes and no. He says, yes, I want to know truth, but it will destroy my family. Um, uh, which, uh, you know, is some deep stuff. But there was a part in this book where he finally decides to uh, that he's a Christian, but um, he doesn't know what to do with himself, and he finds purpose. And when he found this purpose, and he gave, and he gave a speech in his a book about the purpose that he discovered, uh, you know, I had tears running but down my eyes. I was on the lawnmower at work, and, um, you know, it, it hit me really hard. Which is not something I like to admit, you know, uh, me suffering from depression, you know, I am scared to death of my emotions. Uh, I tried to hide from them, I tried to hide my emotions from everybody around me because, you know, I don't want people to know how bad I'm suffering or that I am suffering. Although it's very hard to, to uh, shield those feelings and it's very easy to project those feelings. Um, so, uh, this book was awesome. Um, and you can uh, apply the lessons here as a Christian to many other groups of people. Those, um, Nabil fought tooth, fang, and claw for Islam. He did not want to become a Christian. Um, um, you know, uh, in fact, he was kind of hoping that he would turn uh, David around. But the more he researched uh, Islam, the more unsavory things he discovered and unacceptable things he discovered and um, uh, so he, he, that with um, with some supernatural things that I'm not going to get into because I don't want to tell you the complete story you know I want you to read the book or in my case listen to the book and I recommend that you get um, the uh, extended version they made uh, the first copy of the book, and um, it's like um, six hours, I think, um, to read. And um, I got the eight-hour one, and the eight-hour one has a, a, a recording, a conversation between him and David Wood reminiscing about things. And um, so... I. I bought the original book, the first edition, not first edition, but the first version of the book. And then um, after discovering that there was a, an extended version, I bought it as well. And uh, so I bought the book twice, which kind of got a little bit expensive. Uh, not terribly expensive, but, you know, if you buy the same book twice, that's... Um, and one of them is the extended version, that's... Um, a good bit of money no matter what the cost is you're still paying more for the extra book um, but I would recommend that you get the extended version and I would recommend that you get the audio version um, you know I am extremely dyslexic extremely extremely dyslexic I am literate but my reading muscle is very weak and not only that it's hard for me to sit still to read a book because um, you know I've been accused of having um, ADHD and stuff. So reading is a very difficult task for me. At least for reading for any extended amount of time. But you can put this audiobook on, listen to it while you're driving, listen to it while you're mowing. 
<coughs> listening to it while you're jogging. And uh, not only are you listening to it, you're listening to it from the Bill's voice. He's narrating it. He's reading the book, which is something you're not going to really get to do anymore because he died of uh, stomach cancer. And um, uh, some very terrible people have said some very terrible things about him because um, they felt that Allah was punishing him, which I think is a complete lie. Um, um, I think Nabil accomplished his task, and within his death, um, he gave vlog videos on YouTube, like updates on his health as he was dying. And uh, shortly um, after he, he before he died, you know, he had his final words, his final vlog. And I, I didn't watch all of them, but I watched some of them. And, you know, to have Nabil's final words, to have um, Jesus' final words before he died, and to have Muhammad's final words before they died, and to compare them is very eye-opening. In fact, David Wood has a video on that. Um, and, um, you know, um, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's sad that he's gone, but he has accomplished so much. And his uh, ministry, um, a lot of it's on YouTube. Um, it's a lot of his uh, uh, public speaking and stuffs on YouTube, and um, it will continue to inspire people, to teach people, and to um, motivate people. And this book isn't a self-help book, but I found it very motivating. And um, you know, after I read this book, uh, I told almost everybody about this book. Um, before I finished the book and I was reading it, uh, some of the older um, men uh, at my school that work with me or work in the same area as me were like, Austin, what are you listening to? And um, one of them was like, you know, <coughs> oh, is that old Muslim BS, you know, whatever. And <coughs> I'm not quoting him exactly, but he was giving a negative connotation to um, this book that I was reading. And I said, not at all. This is nothing pro uh Islam. Now, when he's narrating his life story, he genuinely loved Islam as a kid and as a young adult. But towards the end of the book, you know, all of this is building up to a pivotal point in his life. So, if, obviously, when he's talking about his past life uh, or his younger life, he's going to talk positively about Islam. But it's building up to a point where. Um, <coughs> excuse me, there was a turning point in his life, and he's not happy with Islam, and he actually um, is very appalled by Islam, but he loves Muslims. He wants to help um, people find Christ, and kind of the short story of his last words is, don't use uh, what I've taught you to hate Muslims. He says you should love them, and you should uh, minister to them. Uh, this video, I'm going to try to make this sub-20 minutes, but buy this book, listen to it, look up Nabil Qureshi on YouTube and watch some of his stuff. Look up David Wood. Uh, uh, Nabil is a very intelligent person, so is David Wood. They're both very intelligent, both got their doctorates and stuff. Um, but Nabil is slightly more professional in his speaking. But um, David, who's a very interesting man, and I have a separate video on him, is kind of a clown. He, he he brings a certain amount of satire and uh, playfulness into his videos. He's dead serious in his videos, but he, he, he puts it in such a way, in a kind of a sarcastic way, uh, that, uh, you know, and he's doing it not only to educate Muslims, but to educate non-Muslims. Uh, and it's a very entertaining thing to watch and listen to. And he has a series called Islamicize Me. Uh, it's a 30 video series for one day for each day of Ramadan. And uh, it's, about, it's about a group of atheists who are challenged to live by the Quran and the Hadith and Muslim teachings. And they're challenged to live this way. And then they learn that Islam has some very bizarre teachings. So uh, I'm, I'm highly recommending this book. In fact, I got a haircut shortly after I... Um, read finished this book 
and I, I felt compelled to tell my hairdresser, and I told her, as a joke, you don't get paid until you listen to me. And, you know, I was already starting the conversation, but it was time for me to pay her, and I just held the money. I said, you don't get paid until you listen to me. And she's a good friend of mine. We went to school together. So, you know, she knew I wasn't going to withhold payment to her. But it was just a very moving book, a very powerful book. And um, it, it gave me a whole new perspective on a lot of different things. And in fact, that night, I couldn't sleep uh, that well because my mind was racing. And uh, I, I eventually did fall asleep. But um, it, it was just a very powerful book. I don't think this review will do it justice. It's more important than um, Animal Farm from, uh, Owen, oh, uh, what's his name, Owen Wells or whatever his name is. It's more important than Animal Farm. Um, I think <laughs> it's more relevant than um, um, Di Diary of Anne Frank, which Diary of Anne Frank and this book, Seeking All the Finding Jesus, are the only two books that ever brought me to tears. Um, and um, so... That that's how awesome um, f seeking all of finding Jesus is, and that's how powerful it is. So um, I consider both Anne Frank and Nabil my friends, my people, uh, and uh, although I've never met them in person, I feel like I know them through their writings and through Nabil's videos on YouTube. So that's it. I'm Asatsu5. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, I really encourage you to listen to this book. Um, and there's also a third option on the iTunes um, store in the audiobook section. They have the extended version, the regular version, and then they have lectures on Seeking All and Finding Jesus. Um, get the extended version. I highly recommend it. So that's it. I'm Asatsu5, and I'm out.